We have all known the long loneliness, and we have learned that the only solution is love, and that love comes with community. Dorothy Day, from her autobiography, The Long Loneliness. Dorothy Day was a social activist, prolific author, and lecturer who was born in Brooklyn in 1897 and died in 1980. Her father, a newspaper reporter, instilled in her a love of reading and writing. Day's early life was marked by poverty and insecurity, but she managed to win a scholarship to the University of Illinois at age 15. Then, as a young adult, Day moved back to New York City and lived a bohemian existence on the Lower East Side in Greenwich Village. She worked as a journalist for socialist newspapers and participated in protest movements, all the while developing friendship with many famous artists and writers. During this time, she also experienced failed love affairs, a marriage, a suicide attempt, and an abortion, which she chronicled in her autobiography, The Long Loneliness. In her autobiography, Dave d- divides her life into two parts. Quote, the first 25 years, she reflects, were floundering, years of joy and sorrow, with a sense of insecurity. Day had grown to admire the Catholic Church as, quote, the church of the poor, and her faith began to take form with the birth of her daughter, Tamar, in 1926. As a single mother, her decision to have her daughter baptized and to embrace the Catholic faith led to the loss of many of her radical friends, but did not end her commitment to writing about the marginalized. In the early 1930s, she met Peter Moran, a French peasant who became her mentor. Under Moran's guidance, Day opened a house of hospitality for the poor and founded the Catholic Worker Movement and newspaper. It was through Moran's teaching that she came to see how her faith related to the social order. By taking personal action and not action related to the government or some type of government programming, Day determined that the pain of social problems, that is war, poverty, and the depersonalization of life could be reduced. Taking action as an individual committed to the teaching of Jesus was for her the real revolution. She immediately gave her new belief substance by opening a house of hospitality for the poor and publishing the Catholic Worker. For the next half century, her voice in the paper and on their speaking tours was heard supporting social change. The name of Dorothy Day became synonymous with that of a social order that was voluntaristic, communal, and open to creative work. She hated modern warfare and all of the instruments with which it was waged. Her pacifism was absolute. The Catholic Worker newspaper became an important periodical, and her column a central and influential feature of the newspaper. In the 1930s, the circulation quickly reached 150,000, but it plummeted drastically during the Spanish Civil War in World War II, when the editorial position of the paper remained consistently Christian pacifist, and many volunteers and staff members actually went to prison or public service camps for refusing the draft. Post-war circulation recovery was slow, but steady, and the Catholic Worker Movement movement distinguished itself over the next decades for resisting the Cold War. In addition, the newspaper took a leading role in stimulating opposition to the Vietnam War and standing steadily for racial justice. What follows is a trailer for an interesting documentary about Day entitled Revolution of the Heart. Take a look. In many ways, Dorothy Day was a typical grandmother. I see my grandmother as someone who was very ordinary, but also very extraordinary. I mean, I understood that she was different. 
different because Dorothy Day was so often on the front lines, protesting war and nuclear buildup, creating houses of hospitality for the hungry and homeless, and earning her place on the FBI watch list as a dangerous American. Yeah, Dorothy Day is a big troublemaker. As a young journalist, Dorothy Day campaigned for those in need. Her work keeps putting her front and center in the social movements of the time. She wrote about workers' rights, child labor. She was attracted to communism, believing it was a way to improve people's lives, all part of a chapter in her own life that would leave its scars. But with the birth of her daughter, Dorothy Day turned from communism and converted to the Catholic faith. There, she discovered a path that for nearly a half century led her to become one of the greatest champions for the poor America has ever known. She thought if communism is radical, why shouldn't Christianity be radical? This is radical. My grandmother always said that she never meant to start houses of hospitality. She never meant to open up soup lines. But what happens when you start writing about these things, people show up at the door. She wanted the people to exercise their own sense of personal responsibility. You see something that needs to be done, you do it. But accepting the biblical challenge to be peacemakers also compelled her to become a pacifist without compromise, to use her Catholic worker movement and the newspaper she founded to resist America's intervention in any war. Many believed her behavior was un-American. She did describe herself as an anarchist. There's an anarchist dimension to her Christian witness. Some of the most profound and most rewarding demonstrations that culminated in arrests were with the Catholic worker community. I think of Dorothy Day as a firecracker that never goes out. Now this grandmother and anarchist may well be declared a saint. We'd love to see Dorothy made a saint. For both American middle class people and for Catholics, they recognized that something extraordinary was going on. They weren't quite sure what to do with it. She annoyed people because she challenged them. She would say, don't call me a saint. I don't want to be written off that easily. Well, I think if you take the Lord's words, you'll find they're pretty rigorous. The Sermon on the Mount may be read with great enjoyment, but when it comes to practicing it, it really is a, an examination of conscience to see how far we go.